Hey, what's happening? I'm Mike Mutzel. I'm the author of the best-selling book, Belly Fat Effect. And in this brief video, I'm going to share with you some cool science linking your diet, your exercise level or activity level, and the composition of your gut microbiome. So if you don't know, your gut bacteria outnumber the number of human cells in your body 10 to 1. They outnumber your DNA between 150 and 300 times to 1. So they're very, very important. They affect our immune function. They affect our gastrointestinal motility, how much energy we harvest or extract from our foods. They affect so many components of your body. But what's really important is that uh, your activity level and the, the composition of the uh, foods that you eat, meaning protein to carbohydrate to fat ratio, affects the, the types of bacteria that you have in their overall diversity. So this is really important. So a study came out in June of this year. It was uh, published in the journal Gut, and the title was Exercise and Associated Dietary Extremes Impact on Gut Microbial Diversity. So let me just break this down to you. They took 40 rugby players, okay, these were Irish rugby players, and they compared the bacterial DNA in the stools of those rugby players to two different control groups. One control group was a lean control group. They had a low body mass index. The other control group had a high body mass index. They had a body fat percentage of about 33. So these were overweight individuals. And so what they did was compare the stool and they looked at the diet and try to correlate and make some correlations there. So what's really interesting, these rugby players ate a diet that was really rich in calories, 5,000 calories a day. They were eating on average over 300 grams of protein per day and on average over 500 grams of carbohydrates per day. But they're very, very active. now. Compare that to the sedentary lean individuals and the sedentary overweight individuals, though the proportions of macronutrients were totally different. The both groups, both of these control groups, if you will, the lean and the overweight, consumed a lot more carbohydrates to protein compared to the rugby players. Okay, I'm going to explain the significance of this shortly. But they also consumed a lot less calories. Now, we've been told before, and I wrote about this in the book Belly Fat Effect, that the more calories you have, uh, the more changes you get in your gut bacteria. But it's actually a little bit more complicated than that based upon this new research. So check this out. Now, before I tell you the results, you need to understand something that's really important. Bacterial diversity is a big deal. The more diverse an ecosystem is, the better it is. And that same uh, saying holds true for your gut bacteria. The more diverse they are, the more stable they are, and the more protective they are for your own body. So these rugby players had a really diverse ecosystem. And again, this was assessed by looking at 16S DNA in the stool. That's the bacterial DNA. So let me break down some numbers. I don't have all these memorized for you, but um, they looked at bacterial phyla, bacteria families, and genre. So here's the rugby players. They had 22 different phyla of bacteria, 68 different families, and 133 genera which I know you're like, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, let's compare that to the lean control group. So again, this is the lean group that is sedentary. This group only had 11 phyla, 33 families, and 65 genera. This was about half. So it's fair to say, based upon the study, and this is what the researchers concluded, that exercising rugby players, even though they're eating 5,000 calories a day, close to 300 grams of protein and 500 uh, grams of carbohydrates per day, their gut microbiota is about 2x more diverse compared to the lean sedentary individuals. Now, let's compare the gut microbiota of the rugby players to the overweight sedentary individuals. Check this out. So the overweight individuals that are sedentary only had 9 phyla, 33 families of bacteria, and 61 genera. Again, let's compare that to the rugby players. 22 different phyla for the rugby players, 68 different families of bacteria, and 133 genre of bacteria. So again, it's fair to say, based upon this study, that even though rugby players are eating a lot of calories and a lot of carbohydrates and a lot of protein, they're exercising and they're eating better, uh, you know, higher uh, quality foods, which is directly affecting the gut microbiome. What's really interesting too, if we look more at the species level, what they found was that in these uh, rugby players, they had higher levels of archimenzia, which is a really unique bacteria that's actually inversely correlated with belly fat. So this is kind of a new kid on the block. I've yet to find a dietary supplement or a probiotic that has this strain, archimenzia, but you definitely want to uh, check this out. Now, what's really interesting, and if we look at the composition of the diet, this is, this is what I think is important. When you eat a lot of carbohydrates, 
you change your gut microbiome. They love sugar, they love carbs. Now, so that's why it's very important to eat a lot of fiber because bacteria do love fiber, but fiber tends to selectively proliferate good gut bacteria. In contrast, when you eat a lot of fermentable sugars and so forth, you can enable the, or foster the growth of bad bacteria. But these rugby players ate a lot of protein. And so that changed the composition of the gut microbiome, which hasn't really been looked at much as of late. A lot of intervention studies look at fats and carbohydrates and how those affect the gut microbiome and then adipogenesis and fat cell formation. But this study was one of the first that I'm aware of, and I've read a lot of these different research articles that correlated a better composition of the gut microbiome with protein, which is really interesting. What's even more interesting is one of the protein sources in these rugby players was whey protein and supplemental uh, pea and different proteins. So I think it's fair to say that supplementing with protein is beneficial for your gut microbiome. Obviously keeping activity level high, getting grass fed protein and much more, but one of the protein sources in about 10% or 10 to 15% of the protein in these rugby players was from supplemental protein. So that's one thing. But also the, uh, what the researchers have shown in this study and others is that when you eat a lot of carbohydrates, you actually increase the glycan metabolism, which is the sugar degrading or carbohydrate degrading enzymes in bacteria, and that in turn changes the composition. So if you eat a lot of carbs, you're gonna change the glycan metabolism of your gut microbiome, which can affect your body composition and blood sugar. So take home messages here, I think you probably understand. Eat high quality, good protein. Uh, don't count calories, but get out there and be very physically active. I think that's that's really important here. And although this study didn't directly correlate physical activity with changes in the gut microbiome, uh, definitively, we do know um, that they looked at creatine kinase, which is a, a biomarker of uh, exercise and so forth and movement and skeletal muscle mass. And so higher levels of creatine kinase was directly correlated with increased bacterial diversity. So more muscle mass may be protective. Now that's really important stuff. So hope you enjoy this. If you want to learn more about belly fat and gut bacteria and metabolism, head on over to bellyfateffect.com. You can opt in for my free video series and ebook. So hope you enjoy. Thank you.